Adam and Wack, the show. And uh, we've compiled a panel that I know that you have been extremely passionate about making happen, and you think that this is going to be very, very uh, important for the culture. You want to do? You want to handle some introductions here? Um. Yeah. I'm talking about the show today. No, I'm talking about next week's show. But for some reason, I'm introducing it right now. Yeah. You know, you know, you white dudes always like to take the credit. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can say you're a white dude because you don't have a pickup truck. Off camera, he's getting on my ass for not having a pickup truck. <laughs> kind of white dude is he doesn't have a pickup truck. You know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, today, you know, I feel like a lot of the podcasts, a lot of the bloggers, you know, we, uh, we it's fueled off of controversy, beef, and gossip. Mm -hmm. And it's cool because somebody has to talk about it. But, um... We have a lot of voices in our communities that have a strong following. You know, I believe you've um, you've interviewed Tariq before, right? Yeah. And then we got Captain Tazariat, who's uh, from One West, mm -hmm. um, Hebrew Israelite. Correct. Now, my first attempt was to get a debate going on <clears throat> with uh, what, what was the Richard Spencer? Richard Spencer, your brother. You were trying to make him <laughs> make a comeback. Well, I mean, because here goes the problem. On this podcast. And we're going to talk about it a little later on because you pulled a stunt. Okay. Pulled a stunt. You know what I mean? You use the culture, mm. you create your platform, and then know what you do? You put a Klansman up there in front of all your viewers. Klansman is no, inaccurate. With no representation. Not a Klansman. Of us. That was X. Is he an ex? This is a setup. He was never a Klansman. But, what, I, I, but now, but now you've okay, forced me white, into white a position of having to defend him, which is... So-called Negroes, whatever you want to call them. Their uh, main trouble is that they don't know who they are. See, this is, this is what one of the main troubles are. They don't know who they are. They have been split up into so many different uh, races, and they've been called so many names. The older generation, um, they don't know who they are. They don't identify with themselves whatsoever, and they're lost. They uh, maybe call a number of things, any name, just about any name except uh, nigger, or maybe in some cases you could call a nigger would be accepted. Colored, or well, colored, it gives me the impression that this white man was just trying to, you know, hang a tag on us, man, because uh, when you look at something and you say it's colored, that means it's filled in with something. It's, it's it, you know, it's not the original thing. and It's just been filled in like somebody's been drinking chocolate milk or something, you know, colored. The younger generation only accepts one, and that's black. That's identifying with oneself, with one's people. Black people wear naturals to uh, identify with themselves, to um, uh, be free to wear their hair the way it's supposed to be. This is the way the hair is supposed to be. This is the way a person was born, and this is the way he should die with his hair natural. He shouldn't die with, with curls or, 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 or hot combs in his hair after he's lived his life. His hair has never been natural. His hair has never been original the way it was when he was born. When uh, a black baby is born, his hair is not pressed, it's not curled, it's not. It's, it's natural, it's like it's supposed to be. And this should is, is the way a person should end his life, with his true identity of knowing who he is. There has been a time when the so-called Negro was ashamed of the way he looked. And he used every method in the book to try to emulate the whites. They straightened their hair, they processed it, they used various creams, and they did in every possible way to eradicate their original style and their original customs. And they certain got a certain awareness lately, possibly since the riot, in 65 that started somewhere in this vicinity. There's a certain awareness that has come upon the black man or the Negro, whichever is preferred. It's just, I'm proud of the way I look and I'm gonna be who I am regardless 
and my hair is my business, and I like the way I look, and we've done everything to beautify it. The natural is a style that is strictly Negroid style, and it's the hair that makes a difference. That's the one thing that we have that other people can't have like. So we're going to justify our cause and be proud of who we are and how we wear our hair and the style to do everything we can to beautify it. There's several types of naturals. There's the excessively long, referred to as the Africanoid natural. There's the Americanized naturals. There's a moderate natural. And the natural in between, the guy wears his hair at any length that he wants, as long as it's kept clean and it's not slicked down or processed and kept clean and well groomed. You can wear short natural, even down to a Covatus style. That's where it's excessively close to show the complete shape of the head. But the main feature about a natural is cleanliness. It radiates a certain desire to want to be clean. I used to wear my hair pressed and curled, and I wore it that way until I was about 18. And then I began to wear a natural. At the time, I wore a natural because to me it was a fad, you know, like the mini dress that came out. And I got tired of the natural, and I started to get my hair pressed again. And uh, I wore it for a while, and I couldn't style it. I couldn't do anything with it. So I started wearing a natural, and I felt myself, you know. Something came out to say I wanted to wear my hair like this. And uh, because this is the way I came in the world, I didn't come in here with it pressed and curled, you know. I came in here with it nappy, just like it is with black, beautiful hair, you know, and I'm black. So uh, I've been wearing a natural now for almost two years. and. Um, my friends, the ones that wear the natural, they feel the same way I do or can express themselves a little bit different. But I have a few bourgeois friends that are um, still trying to be somebody else. And what some people call the Caucasian and what some people call the honky, they're still trying to be like those people. Well, I don't consider myself uh, trying to be like a white woman. I only wear my hair the way I do because it's, that's the style that I like. I'm a Negro, and I am proud of it. As far as a white person is concerned, I wouldn't want to be like them because the good Lord made me the way I am, and that's the way I like it. Pressing your hair is just like combing your hair, only the comb is warm. I have been getting my hair pressed and curled for a long time, so I have really gotten used to it. It gives your hair, I think, more body. It takes about 45 minutes to get a shampoo, press, and curl. I go at least twice a month, and I get my hair shampooed and dried, and she press it and curl it and style it. I have a, a number of friends that wear natural, and and on some of them, they do look nice. It all depends on how they keep them up. Personally, I don't like natural. Just like clothes, it, it all depends on the person and their taste. I pick the style I think is becoming to myself, and what I like, I wear. I don't like naturals, especially on myself. My mother, she doesn't like it at all. She's uh, a little old-fashioned, you know, she doesn't like it at all. She thinks I should still get my hair pressed. My son, he's wearing a natural now because it's something that uh, I should get him, you know, used to in a way because something to let him know that that's him and nobody else's hairdo is not his. And uh, that's the way I feel about a natural as myself wearing it because it's me, it's naturally me, the way it is now.
that's real talk. And I, I think used no jumper against did, you too. We did. We did. <laughs> and then what, what make it good though, to my point, was that even in the middle of the class, brothers should be able to have disagreements, and it don't end in. Um, ending the friendship forever. Right. Just because, right. I, and that's in the Bible too, like disagreeing with a brother, it happens. That's mm-hmm. again politics. Mm-hmm. The politics of beef. If people have beefs, there should be a place you should be able to go to squash it. Right. It shouldn't be a place that you go to ignite it and keep it going because the goal is to end it. Mm-hmm. If you're in a business and your business and beefing is messing up your business, the only thing you could do is end it. Mm-hmm. And then now, if more people see that instead of the constant tension, friction, violence all the time, then they'd be like, okay, these brothers know how to handle themselves. Right. But nobody is actually going out to teach them. What I like about the organization, I mean, we're good. Oh, Godalha left. The brother that runs California, I'm not from California, I'm from Jersey. I'm born in Jersey, um, raised in, on 141 Woodlawn in uh, Jersey City, New Jersey, but I run New York, meaning I run the school in New York. And so what we do is we create that politic nature. Mm-hmm. If there's any issues that brothers and sisters have, we work out a way to mend that bond so that they can go back to being brothers again. They can go back to being sisters That's a again. Great movie. Mm-hmm. Damn right. But in the entertainment world, it's like the frenzy is the beef. Mm-hmm. The more drama you have, the better and it we're is. Losing. Right. And I ain't gonna say I don't like none of it because mm-hmm. I could get we all could mm-hmm. get caught up in the drama. I like mm-hmm. some of it. Mm-hmm. But I also like resolutions to it right. as well. So if anybody knows the history, you can see, first of all, me and Wack were great beforehand, we're great now, and we rocking on no jumping. I appreciate mm-hmm. Wack oh, for bringing man, up there. Um, S. Mac from Rolling Sixties, mm-hmm. he put up a post the other day that said, just because we end up a, a friendship doesn't make us enemies. Right. Mm-hmm. I simply just chose not to be friends with you anymore. Right. Right, it doesn't make us enemies. Right, that don't mean I can't right. see you. You can see me. Right. We're just not friends anymore. Mm-hmm. Right, so and that's real. But these days, if a friendship ends, yeah, that means we're beefing right. forever right. because right. there's so much to gain from right. the public drama of right. beefing with that person that I constantly see people not be able to mm-hmm. resist it, even though it basically quite often means like compromising their own code and like right. pe- people who say that they're loyal want to like you know just proclaim that they're loyal even though as soon as they have any kind of friction with somebody they run to the internet to document it definitely yeah that's crazy now, Adam, you well. said recently that i blame a lot of non-fba people for a lot of stuff well that's pretty much the theme of a large percentage of the conversations no, no, i've heard you have we ain't no right. large percentage we talking about now, how do i know you're right hey so man lock them doors because yeah. well, <laughs> well, 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 i want to get well, on that i can't hold it against <laughs> right. you because let's, 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 I, let's, I, I love it i'm going to lock the door let's lock the doors real quick thank you brother you'll have a conversation i'm sure you've heard Tariq do this where you know it'll be oh this this black person did this bad thing what do we think about it and his immediate claim is, well, I think they're Haitian. They're definitely not FBAs, yada, yada. <laughs> and it's like, it's just kind of like a fascinating thing oh, that the con- conversation frequently so black veers American. towards. Oh, yeah, foundational black Americans, yeah. So if somebody does something weird, a lot of times it gets dumped on us, and then we look at the background of the people. They're not even from here. So I'm like, wait, I don't want to hold nobody's negativity. So if anybody <laughs> does something. So if a Haitian does something. Right, because what happens. Or a Jamaican does something. Right. Because if a Jamaican or a Haitian wins mm-hmm. an award, all of a sudden the Jamaican American won this award. They mm-hmm. go out of their way to differentiate themselves from us. We got a point. We're going to talk about it. Do the same it. shit yeah. when you do a crime. We got a right. point. Yeah, I get if, yeah, you. If you do a crime, be Haitian when you do that but crime. When I see you go in a war with Dante Ross, for example, on Twitter and whatnot, oh, yeah. it feel, his opinion mm-hmm. is that it's divisive, that this is not productive, that this doesn't add anything to the, the discussion, that black people should be attempting to have more unity, to move more as a unit and not you know separate themselves based on stuff like who's been in the country longer and everything like that what do you what do you say well lineage is lineage you know i come from a lineage and that's just history my lineage comes from here i don't come from no immigrants no immigrants in my background and dante ross his his beef is about the documentary we're doing we're doing a hip-hop documentary where we're telling the truth about who created hip-hop wasn't Latinos and Caribbeans. Okay. That's a lie that they've been promoting. And why do you mm. think they're promoting that? Um, to take Who's promoting that? Um, the corporate media. They're trying to say that... I believe they was part of the rise of it, but they didn't create it. They didn't create that. it. They came no. later. Because they love to like take all the different minorities <laughs> and just sort of round them all together and just say people of color. No, no, so, no, no. You can't do that. No. Well, well, my right. position is a little different, though. So I rock with him with... He probably going to say like we're not African, right? 
we have African lineage. African we have descent. African, yeah, okay. we're descended from Africans. So okay. we do have. Okay, well, I'm, I'm black American of yeah. African descent. I'm a foundational black I'm American. I'm not African, right. nothing. Right. 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 Well, I, I don't believe that we're African. If America and Africa go to war. Right. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I want the Americans to win. I'm ban on for the Spoiler. Americans. <laughs> so I don't want to my... adapt to another way. Bro, they out here with trillions of right. dollars and four miles down the road, mm -hmm. ain't no running water. So my I position don't... is different. Like when we was talking earlier and we was talking about um, Negroes being over here, Taino Indians, we were speaking about that. So mm -hmm. for me, the Taino, Taino Indians today would be what we call the Puerto Ricans mm -hmm. for me. Um, the Dominicans, the Haitians, North Central South, those, all those Indians, those are all my brothers. Mm -hmm. The West Indians, those are my brothers. Mm -hmm. So that's how we look at it. So from and our rock perspective, with them too. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. from my position, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. So mm -hmm. the Mexicans, black people love to hate. That goes right back to that divide. Mm -hmm. Like you get a good book called Black Indians that uh, I was bro, referencing. You said what? that a Hebrew Israelite's mm -hmm. father. Right, that determines what you black. are. No, it has to be an Israelite. So let's say, take Drake. I'll use Drake oh, for an so example. Oh, any, so any of those, if you're part of any of those. Yeah, so take Drake for an example. Um, I heard this, uh, some guy on the internet said that Drake had to take a position on the Israeli-Palestinian war. Right. No, well, that's, that's that black. sucker black. black. Oh, I didn't know if I could say that. Black, black, no, black, 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 black sucker yeah. shit. Yeah, that was, yeah. I'm, I'm, I didn't like that you, shit. That's the divide. He was too, I didn't like that. And I'm going to tell you how that's the divide. And I'm going to explain Drake, and then I'm going to say oh, that's a okay. divide and conquer. Respectfully, you're going to come up here biting your tongue, bro. That's I ain't not know if I could mention that's not a good vlog. representation. No, that's not a good no, representation no, 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 of, of one West, bro. <laughs> we ain't doing no biting no tongue. Cat. No sweat. I got you. No problem. All right, let's go. So that cat Vlad, which I thought was, that's that divide mentality I seen that. I because like that. Drake has a Jewish mother but he has a black father mm. so to us he's black right. it doesn't matter what your mother is it matters what your father is the reason why I said he's trying to play it because Khaled when, too I think it was Drake yeah, and, and Drake right. and Khaled right. but this, here's a divide whenever whites have done anything or so called Jewish people have done anything when has he ever went to Jewish people or white people and said, why aren't you speaking about this mm. or what's happening to black people? Mm. Why aren't you doing this? Why is it only Drake has to speak on the Israeli position so that it could galvanize the people? Why do what we have to? And, and, what is he? And also, you said Russian something Jew. about the 12 tribes. You said right. Russian Jew. Mexicans are part of the 12 tribes. Yeah, uh -huh. Now, some people say, well, there, before 500 years ago, there wasn't a Mexican race. So how would they come there from the There wasn't a Puerto Rican. There right. wasn't a Haitian. There wasn't a Dominican or a Mexican Europe, before black, the Europeans though. colonized them. Right. Like, there's, you can go to a certain right. region you of Mexico, they darker than you and I. Right. There were black people. There well, black see, people even the term black. So I get why, when you're saying black, Ethnically, so I would say Mexicans are from the tribe of Ishikar. I wouldn't call them Mexicans. Okay. I would say so-called Mexican. If you want to say black, all 12 tribes are black, different shades of brown. Mm -hmm. Like a Dominican, they, you see David Ortiz? Mm -hmm. David Ortiz is a brother, but he don't look... As light I as somebody else. The, 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 uh, you look just like a bunch of them. You got some Dominican in you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? For you real, say that bro. I had a job and Dominicans came talking Spanish to me and you I said, look, I don't bro, speak. I swear, I'm looking at these brothers. <laughs> I'm in a whole room. <laughs> All the people from um, the Bodega Association, mm -hmm. owners, and I'm looking at them. Mm -hmm. and they, I see us. Mm -hmm. The right. noses, the lips, the mm -hmm. jaw. I'm looking at us, right? But yeah. They classify themselves as white. Now, see, they? that's, that's yeah, a mentality. Do. Yeah, Puerto yeah. Ricans do nah, too. Nah, clubhouse, they fight us and say they're Afro, they, they no, black. Some do, no, Some but, do. but see, the ones no. that fight us are the ones that really believe that they're Afro-Latina and accept that. But yeah. you do have Puerto Ricans and Dominicans that will say that they're white, that mm -hmm. they're not. So I can't argue with what that, is that point. Where does white factor to the DR, though? To oh, separate so, from yeah. DR. No, 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 but, but, but that oh, is oh, one okay. of the tribes, right? Mm -hmm. So how did how does that... Why, how because they, they're, you, you can look at like Are they colorism. grabbing it just to grab it? Yeah. Or is there some truth to them possibly being European? Well, Spaniards did conquer. Uh -huh. so I they identify say, with the Spanish. So right. Even exactly. though they're black, right. that's why they say, well, I, I'm Spanish. And they, like even black. Spanish is saying you're a Spaniard. Because the Spanish, the conquistadors, they did colonize a lot of North, Central, and South America, the island of Dominican uh, Republic, and so forth. So some of them do. I'm, I'm not saying that. Even black people, every black person is not black. You would have to see, like, whenever I say, like, Bob Marley is not black, I go through, everybody goes into a whole uproar because they look at his complexion, but his father's an old white man. 
When you look at if you, you saying Bob Marley now, if Bob. anybody listening, y'all, so it's Google, not about what you look like. It's, it's about what, what your, your father, father is. is. Right. What about French Montana? French he's Montana's an Arab. No, he's, he's an Arab. Arab. He's Arab. No, I he's thought he's from. Uh, he's from Morocco. Morocco. Yeah, he's not Africa. He's Africa, but they they identify as Arab. They Arab. They go up there and speak all that Arab stuff. But if anybody was to look up Fritz Bob Marley. Fritz is my nigga. I don't yeah. care what you want to call him. I like someone's music. Fritz is my nigga. I don't care what you want to call him. But if you look up Bob Marley's father and take the melanin and put it on Bob Marley's father, that's what Bob Marley looks like. But he's a white man. An old white man. He's like 50 something so years old. Was his mother like African? His mother was black. His mother was, was she a West African? Indian. He... She was Jamaican. His mother was Jamaican. So, of course, growing up under your mother, he takes his mother's culture, identity, and leans more towards that. And I use that as an example because colorism is something that plagues us. Light skin versus dark skin. Whether it's Dominicans versus us, black people, a light skin, a red, let a red bone uh, black person be around a dark skin black person. We're taught that there has to be tension there. We're taught that she has to be or he has to be white because he's a red bone. When you can go into Africa and you can see Africans with blonde hair and blue eyes that have never been touched by Europeans at all. Colorism is something that goes right back to that divide um, and conquer mentality that the Europeans employed on us. I'm American. <laughs> so I'm I American got, too, I got man. You. I'm a foundational black American. I identify with that. See, he said we had, we had an I'm so gender. called American. Right. Cause no. see, I'm gonna be real, bro. I'm gonna right. be real. Right. Like, what's the? Who do we honor? Do we honor the House Negro that say, "Master, they running," mm -hmm. or do we honor those white people that hit us and fed us along the way? I believe it's good on both sides. So and I'm born in you can't 77. You can say that every single white person is evil. You can't That's do what that. I'm saying. When we say. They help. They, some some of them hung from trees just like we did. I don't know about you going to. What? I don't know. Yeah. You, you know about you, saw, you telling me you none of them white people yeah. that got caught helping us know. on you, the move hung from trees. You got to prove that. I don't believe so no So you white. telling me them, them, nah. them Klansmen mm -mm. just let them go. Mm -hmm. They didn't treat them as if they treated us. If they us. did kill them, they didn't hang them. Right. That's reserved for us. Right. But when we say, so like sometimes Israelites, now I'm going to say some things that Israelites say. Sometimes you might see the Israelites say, and this includes me, say like the white man is the devil, right? The word devil just means deceiver. When we make that statement, we're not talking about every single person. It's like saying all black people eat chicken. All black people don't eat chicken. Throughout the 1800s and 1900s, 3,400 black Americans were lynched. 1,300 whites were lynched. Yeah, go. Oh, you I'm hung from a tree. Right. I've never I, I just no, Googled those, those, those are the ones that's just documented. I Googled hey, were whites lynched. Oh, okay. So, okay. I don't know. Like, bro, Was it so, hang lynched, though? Like hanging? And I'm, I'm going to be real with you. Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, when, I, when I got out of prison, mm -hmm. my job opportunities um, came from a family uh, called Wagoners, Wagoners Trucking out of Billings, Montana. Mm hmm. <clears throat> You talking about, you know, they those type of white, they come from that. Um, David Wagner, Wayne Wagner. I walked in there on parole, French braids, all that, and I told him, I said, look, I'm this, I'm that, I need a job. He gave me a job. Um, one of my first contracts in the music business uh, because Ray J gave me a shot to enter right. that side of the business out and get out the streets. Mm -hmm. um, Alan Grumblack. But he's Jewish, mm -hmm. right? So, um, in prison, I've had fights with what they call the Peckerwoods, mm -hmm. right? I have fights with Crips, with Bloods. So, when I say I'm American, I'm simply saying that when it comes to me doing business and navigating myself through life, I think like that. I don't look at a person and think because they're black, they're good for me, or because they're white, they're bad for me. Right, you're not supposed I, to. I though. first right, let right, them right, present right, themselves. Right, right. exactly. And then I, you're not I, I, right. I gauge it and judge it at that. Because right. you got some people like, all white people are the devil. No, I know uh -huh. some black devils too. I'll tell a story. I remember, I, I, so I work in uh, corporate America, right? So I do my videos, I street teach, and all of that. And so I uh, work in networking, you know, computers yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that stuff like that. So one day I come to the job, this Puerto Rican brother, he's like, Yo, Tyree, man, they found you.